Thank you very much, President Spencer, and good morning, trustees, faculty, parents, loved ones, and especially the class of 2017. It's a good year. My message today is for the graduates. Today, you are graduating from one of the most prestigious schools in our country. There are some institutions that have a reputation so stellar that just saying you received a degree from there makes people believe you are really smart. <laughs> Bates College is such an institution. And if by some means you are managing to graduate and you are not really smart, please keep that hidden from uh, your uh, public because your classmates and your alma mater will appreciate it. 41 years ago, I received my graduate degree from the Harvard Graduate School of Education, and I remember it like it was yesterday. Armed with that degree, which certified to the entire world how brilliant I was, I couldn't wait to demonstrate to any and all who had the misfortune of working with me how talented I was. My peers were not impressed. I was young, but I was convinced that my generation would make America a better country and I had my eyes on that top spot. The top spot was held by my mother's generation. They called it the greatest generation. They won World War II, they defeated the Nazis, ended the Holocaust, and launched an industrial revolution. I was determined that my generation would do better. You see, I have always been deeply moved by the sacrifices that others made to make our country the greatest nation on earth. I love the ideal of America, even as I grappled with its imperfect reality. I knew what, right out of college what many people still don't understand. Countries don't become great by themselves. It takes heroic sacrifice. Our country was molded and created and improved by women and men whose moral compass was not moved by the influence of wealth or prestige or notoriety. They believed that America stood as a beacon for the world on which true freedom, true democracy could be viewed. These leaders became my role models and I sought them out for inspiration. I made a promise to myself that I would be like them. I would challenge America to become a better place for its children. In 1975, when I graduated, it was evident to me that America needed to become a better place. Growing up in the South Bronx, which was the poorest congressional district in the United States, I saw firsthand what happens when people are desperately poor. Not just financially poor, but poor in spirit, without hope, I saw the crime, the violence, the filth, the drugs. And I made a promise that if God allowed me to survive that place, I would bring an end to children growing up in places where other Americans wouldn't be caught dead. I looked to my role models for guidance. My first role model who called me to a life of service was Rosa Parks. Her story, known by all, inspired a poor boy to believe that an individual courageous act could change the world. While I was still in elementary school, President John F. Kennedy at his inauguration challenged the nation to ask not what your country can do for you, but what you can do for your country. As a young boy, he meant so much to me because he stood up for civil rights, challenged segregation and Jim Crow, an evil practice that, left unchecked, would have destroyed America. He sacrificed his life for our country when he was assassinated in Dallas in 1963. I was in the sixth grade. His brother, Bobby Kennedy, picked up his brother's mantle. He forced America to see the impact of poverty and continued to challenge the prejudice and racism of our country. Bobby Kennedy knew he was risking his life, but he was a great American. He was assassinated in 1968. The same year that Bobby Kennedy was assassinated, Dr. Martin 
Luther King Jr. was assassinated. I was in the 10th grade. So just imagine what I was experiencing. I'm in high school, and Americans are going to jail, being cursed and beaten, being killed, so that one day I might get a good education, live in a decent home, get a decent job. People with everything to lose, money, fame, loving families, lost it all for the ideals that this country stood for. Who could not feel obligated to continue their work to ensure that their death would not be in vain? With these men and women as my role models, you can see why I felt compelled to make this country a better place. The promise I made as a teen that I would get a great education and come back and rescue the children trapped in our urban ghettos was something that I took seriously. And I have spent my life trying to keep that promise. And this is something that I want you to remember. I could have never created the Harlem Children's Zone by myself. My partner in this effort, Stan Druckenmiller, is a businessman. We built the zone together. The hundreds of millions of dollars we have raved over my tenure has come from businesses, philanthropists, foundations, and government. To me, this is the greatness of America. Women and men coming from different walks of life to join together in a common cause to make this a better country. I would love to say to you that my generation has accomplished my dream of being a better generation than my parents. Alas, we have not. While my generation has done real good and made real progress, we have also left you a real mess. We denied climate change until we have damaged our world environment. We have child poverty rates that are staggering with more than 16 million children living in poverty. 38% of all black children live in poverty. Over 46 million Americans are on food stamps. And poor children in this country still cannot get a quality education. And our country locks up more people per capita than any place on the face of the earth. So I wish I could stand before you today and say that my generation is leaving you a country that is better than the one we inherited from our parents. It's not like we haven't done any good. We eradicated polio, created technology that's revolutionary. We've improved civil rights, gay rights, women's rights. But we haven't kept my promise to eliminate those places where our children don't have a chance. America's children are more in peril than ever. But I am not worried about my promise, because let me tell you something else that my role models taught me. The best of America is yet to come. The work we don't complete that attempts to make this country a better place, the next generation will finish it. In 1900, when Susan B. Anthony, another of my role models, who courageously fought to end slavery, then led the women's suffrage movement, she was asked when women would get the right to vote. She said, and I quote, it will come, but I shall not see it. It is inevitable. We can no more deny forever the right of self-government to one half of our people than we could keep the Negro forever in bondage. It will not be wrought by the same disrupting forces that freed the slave, but come it will, and I believe within a generation. Fourteen years after her death, the 19th Amendment granting women the right to vote was passed. People believe that Dr. King's I Have a Dream speech was his greatest. I don't agree. I was always the most moved by the speech Dr. King gave in Memphis, Tennessee, right before he was assassinated, which later was called the mountaintop speech. In that speech, Dr. King confirmed what I believe today. The work of making this a better country is often started by someone but left to others to complete. In that speech, Dr. King said, and then I got into Memphis, 
and some began to say the threats or talk about the threats that were out. What would happen to me from some of our sick white brothers? Well, I don't know what will happen now. We've got some difficult days ahead, but it really doesn't matter to me now because I've been to the mountaintop. And I don't mind. Like anybody, I would like to live a long life. Longevity has its place. But I'm not concerned about that now. I just want to do God's will. And he's allowed me to go up to the mountain. And I've looked over. And I've seen the promised land. I may not get there with you, but I want you to know tonight that we as a people will get to the promised land. I'm not worried about anything. I'm not fearing any man. My eyes have seen the glory of the coming of the Lord. Dr. King was assassinated the next day at the Lorraine Motel. We named our school Promise Academy because I promised our children and their parents that I would fulfill Dr. King's dream. I promised that we would be there from birth through graduating college. My problem today is that my 13,000 children actually believe me. You see, to my children, I'm eight feet tall and a superstar. My children know I must be a star because they saw me on Oprah <laughs> four times. So when I walk around my schools, my children point and yell with enthusiasm, it's Mr. Canada, it's Mr. Canada. They want to shake my hand and give me a hug. It's really the cutest thing you've ever seen. They love me and I love them. Uh, by saving these children, I hope I can set an example that inspires America to save all children. There's one problem, though. I'm 65. My seven-year-olds think I'll be there when they graduate from high school and sit here like you all graduating from prestigious colleges and graduate schools. But more than likely, I will not. My time has come to an end. After 32 years working at the Harlem Children's Zone, I retired in June of 2014. And I realize others will have to finish this work. Someone else will have to pick up the mantle and say, no matter what else I do with my career, I will make sure I leave my country a better place than was left to me. I promised my kids I would be there for them, making this country better. And I hope that you will promise me that no matter what you do with your life, you will sp spend some part of it making sure this country is a better place for our children. You see, I've had a great career. Today I have more recognition than I'm comfortable with. I have celebrity friends and get A-list invitations. It's really quite a distraction, but a distraction nevertheless. I keep my eyes on the prize, that promised land for my children that is America's future that Dr. King talked about. 10 years from now, when I'm puttering around my house and playing with my grandchildren, I know I will be constantly smiling. My wife, knowing how serious I am, will ask why I'm so happy. And I'll say to her, because my children will be saved. And she'll say, but how do you know you haven't been to work in years? And I'll say, because those kids were so smart and talented. They were the best we have. And they promised. They could do anything they wanted with their lives. They graduated from Bates College, and they promised. My promise to my kids will be kept. I know it. And I'll look at my wife, Yvonne, and say, I think they might be the greatest generation yet. You'll see. God bless and God speed the class of 2017.